I started out like most people on YouTube. I watched others who had come before me. There weren't a lot of motovloggers at that time, just a relative handful compared to today. But there was a sense of true community. Even if you only had a thousand subscribers, you had a serious following because unlike today, whoever did sub you actually watched your videos. Like most, I started out watching the motovlogger M13. And for those who don't know, he was the first guy to stick a camera inside his helmet and start talking. Soon after, I found others. Some who wanted to take their creativity further. Some who wanted to make their own mark on the genre. Steel Horse Club and Wooden Chairs would make comedic skits. Svengali, who always found a way to make you smile. Soon the list grew with Rebel Yell 91, Oki Honda Girl, Lori Jennifer, and Chase, of course. Not to mention so many others. But there was one for me personally that stood out. I started watching Bilma's videos in early 2010. I, I liked the style of his storytelling. I liked the way he cut everything together, and I always found him interesting and informative. After a few months of watching his channel, I decided to comment on one of his videos. It was a simple compliment. But to my surprise, he actually replied. It wasn't just a generic response either. I noticed that even though he was getting hundreds of comments, he replied to each and every one. Billy inspired me that day in many ways. He made me start to think I might be able to start a channel of my own. He taught me the value of personal connection within our community. And he showed me that no matter how many people follow you, you have to be the best possible version of yourself. I already knew that I wanted to join the community, but now I knew what kind of vlogger I wanted to be. Billy had a profound impact on me in that way. Soon, I got myself a camera and started sharing. My first subscriber was my dad. My second was none other than Bilma, AKA Billy Music. I thanked him for a sub and he replied with words of encouragement in a way only Billy could. And slowly over the years, we built a friendship from afar. It's not like we talked every day, but it was a friendship nonetheless. One day in 2011, Billy announced his trip to the Arctic Circle. It just so happened to take him and Tracy within my neck of the woods. He gave me a shout and asked all kinds of typical American questions, like what kind of electricity do we have? Do we use the same kind of power plugs? And my favorite, should he bring his gun along with him? I told him Canada is just like the US, except we're a little less gun happy so he should leave his gun at home. His route took him near Edmonton, which was quite a ways away from my hometown of Calgary. So another vlogger named Hot Rodden 2002 said he would set up the location for our meetup. And unfortunately, Hot Rodden picked a place that was way more convenient for me rather than Billy and Tracy. And boy, did Tracy let us know the moment he pulled up. Even though the guys were incredibly tired after their long day of riding, they jumped at the chance to meet some fellow riders from the community. They say never meet your heroes. Well. Billy was just a guy, but I did look up to him in a lot of ways. When I finally did get the chance to meet him face to face, it was like we were all old friends. Thanks largely to Billy and Tracy and their stories. Tracy was a riot, by the way. Man, that guy can tell a story. It wasn't always sunshine and rainbows. Some people had told me that Billy had a bit of a temper. They would tell me about their falling out with him. And I didn't discount their story, but since he and I were on good terms, I saw no reason to rock the boat. One day, though, we did come to words. I will respect his privacy here and say only that there was a misunderstanding between he and I that upset him quite a bit. So, for a time, we didn't speak. I was pretty saddened by the event, but there was nothing I could do. After a bit of time passed, Billy started commenting on my videos again. I don't know what changed. I don't know if he had come to realize that he may have overreacted, or maybe it just wasn't worth the hassle to hold a grudge. We never really talked about it after that. By that time, Billy was about to retire from the military. He had big plans to make his mark on the world of cooking. He was going back to school to become a chef. Now that surprised quite a lot of people. I knew he loved food, but not that much. He had plans on turning his basement into a workshop. He had even talked about writing a book on his travels with Tracy. He had so many plans, and I was excited to see the next chapter of his life unfold. Just after New Year's, I messaged Billy to wish him a Happy New Year. I also sent him a few pics of a project I was working on, and I was surprised he didn't respond. He always responded. But this time, he was silent. 
The thought crossed my mind that maybe he was angry with me again, but for the life of me, I couldn't think of anything I could have possibly done. A day or two later, I got a message from Defobra. He asked me if I'd heard the news. Billy was dead. We knew that he had been dealing with some heart problems for a while. But dead? He was so young. Defobra and I talked about it for quite some time on the phone. We just couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. Now, I was nowhere near as close to him as Tracy was, or several other people for that matter. But I still felt a loss, and so did much of the YouTube community. <sighs> Billy is gone. But his work remains. His family remains. And his friends remain. His memory will live on long after his last breath, and I find great comfort in that thought. I'm glad I got to meet him, and I'm glad he helped inspire me to join this crazy thing called motovlogging. Without him, I probably wouldn't have got to meet so many amazing people. We never know how long our wheels get to spin. We only know one thing. The road each of us travels will one day run out, so we have to make sure we enjoy every twist and every turn. So, to my friends all over the world, and to my friends who are no longer with us, I'll see you out there. On two wheels, we are one. <laughs>